Would you go anywhere for the sake of the gospel? Would you do anything, no matter how unconventional it seems? Get ready, because these are the days of blind faith. Tell me. I hear you. Is it you? Is it you? I hear you. Hi, I'm Freedom One, and welcome to another episode of Hearing God. Every now and then, the Lord gives me a dream of corporate nature, and I feel led to share. Uh, this dream I like to call blind faith, because that's what it illustrates. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and tell you the dream. Uh, I'm joining my husband on a mission where he has been for a while. It's at a hotel on the beach. So I go down the elevator, and in there, there's a, hel there's a hotel employee that says the strangest thing. Uh, something to the effect about, in the event of a hurricane, you should be as close to the water as possible. And I'm thinking to myself, is this God speaking? So I leave the elevator and I'm in search of breakfast and there's another partner uh, there with me, a person that would represent someone that's partnering with the body of Christ in general that is in the true vein and the true spirit of God. Um, so as we go down a hallway to the left is a church service or a religious function of some sort and this partner immediately goes to their knees and is drawn and con consumed by this event and is no longer responsive to me so I just continue on. I reach the beach in a tented area where breakfast is being served. Again, a hotel employee, this time I overhear their conversation, mentions that in the event of a hurricane, one should be as close to the water as possible. <laughs> so the wind is picking up a bit, the sky begins to look foreboding, a group of men are talking about the weather, and one of them has constructed something akin to uh, Indian weather rock. But before he can finish even talking about it, it signals that a hurricane is indeed coming. So I recognize that indeed the information that the hotel employees gave me was actually God speaking through them, unawares. So I pan the beach for the furthest structure closest to the water. Um, it happens to be a small cinder block towel storage building and I'm looking it over to see how I can get in as it's accessed by hotel personnel, you know, by a key. So, uh, as I woke up, I had a sense that the whole hotel structure was going to collapse. So, because I was to be in the small building, I would therefore be safe. So, uh, to further on in the interpretation, first of all, the Lord had me read in Luke 17 that night prior to the dream. Uh, and an excerpt of, of Luke 17, uh, starting with verse 31. On that day, no one who is on the roof of his house with his goods inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken, and the other left. Uh, two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken, and the other left. So, what we need to pay attention to in this dream in conjunction with what God was leading me into prior is that I recognize the voice of God. But his instruction was life-threatening, threateningly unconventional. Uh, remember verse 33, whoever tries to keep his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. Only by the Spirit of God will we be safe by abandoning your will to Jesus. Those that attempt preservation by any other method will lose. So, in the dream, in the hall, on the way to the beach, a partner literally was brought to their knees by religion. Then they lost all sense around them. 
they became hypnotically ensnared and could go no further. I feel this is a stern warning for those that continue to hop from function to function, proclaiming, here it is, or there it is, uh, which is actually taken from Luke 17, 20, a little bit further up there. So remember that Jesus was addressing those that asked, when would the kingdom of God come? And do you recall his reply? The kingdom of God is within you. So the partner was captured and could go no further on with God because of the allurement of the spirit of religion. God's method of telling me what to do was very plain to me in that by using locals that would never agree with such statements naturally. So although the directive would be fearful to the natural man, because I knew the voice of God, there was nothing to question in his seemingly deadly command. Which brings me back to the excerpt I added. Uh, after that passage, a disciple asked, Where, Lord? He replied, Where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. I believe that this dead body is the church at large. And the partner in my dream would represent a vulture that gathers. Have you ever seen a lot of vultures fighting over a scarce bit of food? And it's not a pretty sight. This is a pretty accurate description of what happens as the churches all continually hop on these bandwagons, all preaching the same things, all writing the same books, etc. Instead of being rivers bearing life, they are reduced as scavengers. Similar how demons become as parasites leeching off the glory of God out of human vessels. Judgment comes, but those that stay on task and target have nothing to fear. The true sheep know the master's voice, and he continues to go after every last one.